When I started here in Ketchikan, the timber industry was the big economic player. Logging camps were remote, isolated locations on islands, and the little airplanes were kind of the day-to-day -day groceries, mail, spare parts, mechanics, truck drivers, the people part of getting crews to and from Ketchikan. End of 1998, the pulp mill closes. By year 2000, every other house in Ketchikan as you drove up and down the streets had essentially a for sale sign on it. This was a very unique, pristine area, and so the city realized that that was the best opportunity for it to develop. Most people that we haul out to Misty Fjords as a guest come from an urban environment. Everywhere they look, it's roads, power lines, bridges, shopping malls, and other forms of development. When you can take a person to the same type of environment that John Muir would have been seeing in the late 1880s to get out to those remote areas, that's where us little guys come back into the picture. Oh, it's a hoot. Uh, you get out there, you give me an otter, and I'm out there climbing around 5,000 foot peaks, looking down on snow fields and glaciers, descending down into really thick wooded forest and into these quiet saltwater fjords. If I was independently wealthy, I'd do this for free.